Hey guys, I've got a special video for you today. I'm doing a review of the VI Labs Ravenscroft 275 Virtual Instrument. It's a virtual piano. If you don't know what a virtual instrument, it's basically just a piece of software. It's a, it's a piece of software and a sound library that connects your digital keyboard. My, uh, you know, I've got my Casio, or whatever. Um, that's mapped to this. Basically, it's mapped to a much better grand piano. So I'm going to give you a quick sample of what it sounds like, and then we're going to talk a little bit about some of the features. So just pretty much out of the box, with well, pretty more or less out of the box, it sounds like this. So I don't know if you can catch that from the little dynamic uh, microphone that I'm using to capture this whole thing. I just can't, you know, capture it through the computer because um, my computer's working pretty hard to, to screen capture this stuff. But basically, uh, suffice it to say, whatever you're hearing, I imagine it sounds actually pretty good, but whatever you're hearing, it sounds even better where I'm sitting. It actually sounds amazing. I've got these two huge speakers. Um, so what's going on there is... You just got uh, the, the uh, Ravenscroft has got these closed microphones. So basically what the Ravenscroft 275 is, is it's a sample of a $300,000 handmade uh, nine foot concert grand piano. It is basically a ridiculously, redonkulously awesome piano with, um, it basically just sounds amazing. Sounds like a $300,000 piano. <laughs> so this is a, a sort of a sample of that and trying to emulate what that piano does and put it in the hands of people who have digital keyboards, which is pretty awesome, pretty um, mind-bending, actually. So what they've done here is they've... So let's look at this first thing here. This is just the close uh, microphone uh, samples. So you see there's a diagram in the middle here, and you've got these two diagrams of these two microphones. That's where the two close microphones recorded this amazing piano. And so just, if you just have that one turned on, you've got th those microphones reproducing a range of samples that they've recorded. So I'll give you, I'll just play a C major scale. Now, you might have heard like a, a slight lingering of like, a slight lingering of overtones. That's like a real piano because the top, you know, third of the piano or so doesn't have dampers, um, pedals, doesn't have dampers on because they don't ring for that long. So you get that, you have that slight overtone every time you play on a real piano. So it's emulated on this as well. When I first heard this thing online, when I heard samples, I was really impressed with a number of things. I was mostly impressed with how it felt and sounded like a real piano and that you could barely, if at all, distinguish the difference. I actually had trouble distinguishing the difference when there was, I saw a video of somebody playing the actual piano and somebody playing this virtual instrument and it sounded pretty darn similar. So, but the thing that really impressed me most was uh, the length of the sustain. That, that sort of struck me as something that seemed different about this thing. So I'm gonna play a quick sample of something and I'm gonna let it ring, listen for the sustain, okay? So I'm going to start talking because I don't want to waste your whole day, but you can probably still hear that ringing in the background. That's pretty cool that it is capturing that really, really long uh, ring, and it's just like a real piano. So, um, okay, so I'm going to start digging into some of the other stuff that's, goes, that's going on here. If you want, like, the quick review, I just want to say this thing is awesome. I'm really impressed. So let's take a look at some of the other uh, mic options. You see this little swirly uh, arrow thing. If I click that, it's going to start loading the player microphone library. So it has a sample of sounds that, uh, it, it sampled this whole piano from a whole bunch of different microphone positions. The first one you heard was the close uh, microphones. The ones that I'm loading right now are for the player. So there would be a microphone here and right here, like to the right and the left of where the player sits. Now if you think about the sound coming from the strings and moving through a whole bunch of stuff, you know, like all these felts and like the piano itself, the wood bar that's in front of you and bouncing off of stuff to get there and traveling a distance to get to this microphone, that just subtle difference there is going to be the difference in sound. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn this off. So I'm, I just sort of, the library is loaded, but I turned it off. 
We're going to listen to the close microphone play a C major scale. I'm going to switch to the player and see if you notice a difference, okay? So here's the close microphones. It's a pretty crisp sound, like apple cider. <laughs> here's the player microphones. It's actually pretty beautiful. It's, it sounds to me more wooden. To me, you can sort of hear the wood a little bit more, but it's actually kind of a rich sound. So that's cool. I'm going to move through these microphone options just so that I can, um, you know, t there's a lot to explain in, in all this thing. So I'm going to turn this player off. I'm going to turn the close ones back on. So I do a lot of recording, and I'm... I really like to get a really clean sound, it, like as you know, basically get the sound right off of the string. So I would, my ears sort of prefer the close uh, sound. But if I could see myself also using this player option because I like think almost tricking myself into thinking I'm sitting in front of a ridiculously awesome piano, and this you know can help me do that. So here's the room. I've just loaded the room sample. I'm going to turn uh, turn that off. I'm going to unload the player. I'm going to start loading the side so that that'll be ready to go next time. So here's the close microphone again, and there's a C major scale. Crisp like apple cider. And here's the room microphones. The rooms are these ones in the back here, so they're getting more of the walls. To me, I hear more, like a little bit more, almost like reverb. You can kind of hear like the walls. It's a very subtle thing. I don't know if the microphone that I'm using even picked up on that, but I can hear a subtle difference. I'm going to turn that room off now, and now let's listen to the side. The side is just like this little microphone pop popping out the side. I've seen people record classical music like this. So let's one more time, we'll listen to the close microphone. So that's sort of like our, um, what we're going to compare against. Here's the side. So again, it's sort of a wooden, more wooden sound, and it's I think it's slightly less wooden than the player, and that's probably the best way to describe it. So I'm going to be doing the rest of this stuff with the close microphone, um, just because it's sort of like a clean, it's sort of like a standard that we can compare everything else against. But I'm also fond of this player. Oh, I didn't mention that you can mix and match. So if I were to turn um, two of these samples on, I could I could have like the close be part of partly in there, and then you know. It sort of mixes those two samples, so that's a pretty cool little feature. I'm going to turn that off, go back to the, the uh, close version, and let's see how high should I put this on about there. Okay, so I want to show you a couple of other things. I actually already turned on this unicorda. You see this unicorda option here. This is sort of another sort of layer, I guess, and I love this little thing here. When this is on, the it makes the piano sound like a million bucks, and especially, hold on, I got like a bag, especially when you're pushing down the soft pedal, the pedal is all the way to the left. So listen to this, I'm going to play the same exact thing twice in a row, the second time I'll push down the left pedal and try to play with feeling. So I'll play that first sample. And then here it is with the left pedal down. I, I just think some for some reason I don't know how it is possible but I'm playing the exact same MIDI keyboard that I always play and for some reason when this unicorda is checked on the Ravenscroft 275 virtual instrument I feel like I have way more control I feel like I, I can actually control the dynamics and it's a really amazing feeling I had almost forgotten that that I could do that <laughs> so this is an awesome feature there's a feature down here called Muted Strikes. I will load that up, and now you see I've actually gone in ahead and set this to 66. Now 66 is usually the sustenuto pedal cold channel. I think that's what the CC stands for, cold channel. Basically what that means is anytime I push down the middle pedal on my piano, I'm going to be turning on this Muted Strikes. Now I had to change this sustenuto pedal to a different number, but it's the only way I could get my MIDI keyboard to act as a controller for that. So when I push down the middle pedal, the sustenuto pedal, listen to how the piano changes. It's as if I'm pushing my finger over the strings of the piano and then playing them like muted. And that's something that I actually saw one person do once in a jazz club and it blew my mind. It sounded awesome. And I think to be able to, I never used the, the middle pedal, the sustenuto pedal, but now that I can map this muted strikes option to that middle pedal, 
I could see myself switching between pedals and actually using that middle pedal in the middle of a song. So for instance, if I were playing something kind of creepy like this. So right now I'm using una corda and a little sustain. You've got this like creepy thing going on and you might want to mix up and get a muted strikes for the next part. So here's like the, here it is again. And I'm mixing the sustain. So it's pretty cool to be able on the fly switch. You can't do that with a real piano. It sounds like the real piano version, but it gives you this like extra thing that you just can't do with a real piano. I, you can't really be getting up and like getting your hands over. So, uh, so totally awesome. Huge fan of the Muta Strikes. Huge fan of Unicorda. Huge fan of, by the way, if you haven't noticed, of Ravenscroft 275 in general. So let's see. There's other cool stuff I need to show you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna not cover everything. I'm only gonna cover you the, the like the the high impact stuff. Timbre shift. This is one that I recently figured out. You can make your piano sound. So that's sort of like the standard amazing sound. I can also make it sound really tinny. Like that's like way, way bright. Almost like, almost like an electric piano. That's like a super bright piano. And you can go in between, you know, if I went to like say six, you've got a still pretty bright piano. So you have a pretty bright option there. You can go all the way in the other direction, minus 12, and get a really sort of warm, dark piano. Mellow piano. Pretty cool. So e even, and I'm also holding down that, that soft pedal. So with, in combination with Una Corda, you can get a really, really soft touch. All right, whatever. <laughs> so I'm gonna set that back to zero. I mean, straight out of the box, zero is like pretty unbelievable tone. Okay, stereo width, that's self-explanatory. Blah, 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 key noise. Okay, so if I turn this key noise all the way up, you'll hear, uh, you hear it mostly when I let go of it. Um, and it, the problem is you're probably hearing some of my actual key noise, like the clacking from this, but I'll try and be quiet here and listen and see if you can hear like the wooden sound. You hear that? kind of right after the sound. That's that would be the key noise. I like to generally keep this like just loud enough so that you would like subconsciously hear it if you're a piano player, but that you wouldn't really hear it otherwise. And that's generally my approach. Same with the, the pedal noise. I can turn that all the way up and listen to this. I just jammed on the sustain pedal and you hear that like sound. If you're a piano player, you know, that's like, that's the sound of $100,000 or more. <laughs> And that's like lifting up off of the keys and all the dampers were lifted, right? So um, there are sort of other pedal noises that you can hear and it'll sound, it sounds like a piano. I like to also keep that low because I tend to compress the audio that I work with after I record. And if you, rec you compress a lot, the low sound stuff comes up to the surface. So I like to have it pretty low, but the same, same principle. I want it to be there just enough so that somebody kind of feels like it's there, but doesn't notice that it's there. That's sort of my goal. All right, we're gonna move right along here. Um, this stuff, sympathetic resonance. Just think about like, basically this is kind of like um, uh, reverb. So I'll turn this all the way down and I'll play a chord. And now I'll turn it all the way up and I'll play a chord. You hear more of the strings um, resonating basically. Okay, uh, reverb is, is off when you first start this thing up, but I actually think this is a pretty interesting thing. I'm gonna make this way, uh, use way more reverb than I usually do, just so you can hear some stuff. So I, I've got this set to warm and small room. I think this is my favorite reverb preset setting, the warm and small room setting. And here's what it sounds like. And it just gives you this nice reverb that like makes it sound like you're in a, in a small room. I don't know, it sort of wraps its arms around you and gives you a hug. <laughs> Here is Spacious Church. I'm gonna pump this up, pump up the volume, and you'll hear uh, you'll hear that sort of like really like echoey. <laughs> and 
and it stays for a lot longer too. When you just bounce off of you still hear like whoa, whoa, whoa. it totally sounds like you're in a church. So I really like these um, clean hall. What's that one? Sounds like a hall. My favorite, warm and small room. I don't know, just buttery. Buttery is a way to describe this entire thing. It's awesome. Okay, so let me make sure I get to all the cool stuff. This thing right here, this sensitivity curve, you can change the curve. So like if you have a really heavy touch, you could bring it further down this way and you know it gives you a softer touch and you can do the opposite if you like want to play really loud all the time and you don't want to have to push the keys too hard. I find that the default setting is just right. They've done a really good job with the defaults. All right, so um, that's mostly everything for the main, for this like sort of settings panel. You can come over here and you can see they have these other panels. This is a way to change um, the velocity curve. If your piano is like, you know, tends to be a little bit jumpy, um, you can sort of change each note so that it, you can change how, how hard you have to push it to get the right sound. And effectively, you can sort of almost like fine tune the action of your piano in a way. It's a way of getting closer, okay? Now, over here, we actually have tuning presets, equal temperament. That's your standard. Um, thing and you've got just Pythag Pythag Pythagore major Pythagore minor I don't know what Pythagore modified so these are like different different tunings and you see this stuff shifts um, so if you know stuff about tuning you know that it's an interesting subject there's more than meets the eye so you can actually go in and mess with the tuning so it's pretty sweet um, other than that you know you use you do a file and you would like set up your, your, your settings and stuff. But that's that's the, the basic thing right there. Um, I guess I'll show you one other cool thing, which is a sympathetic resonance that the key, that this thing does. You know, a lot of um, virtual instruments do this, but it's sort of like a nice thing. You can, it's I almost feel like you have to have it in there. Basically, when I you'll see the notes down here light up when I hold down, like I'll hold down, um, I'll hold down this, I'll do like a, just a C chord in the middle. And I just push down the notes quietly so you didn't hear them play. When I play like a, the C chord, you know, down here, it's gonna vibrate this chord up here. You're gonna hear it. So I'm just gonna bounce like this. Ready? And you hear the strings over here ringing. And that's because in a real piano, if you were to do that, these strings would come over here and like wiggle those strings a little bit, and you'd hear that what's called sympathetic resonance. So really, um, pretty awesome. I hope this review wasn't too in depth for you or not. But basically, the long and short of it is, I think this thing is is redonkulous. Um, I'm going to link to a couple things. I'm going to show you one little snippet. I did record a cover of Over the Rainbow that I arranged using this uh, plugin recently. I'll link to that now and I'll link to other stuff throughout the video, but I'm going to play just a little piece of it for you so you can sort of hear what it can do. This is with Unicorda, close microphones, and I'll just play a little sample. So basically, when I got my hands on this thing, when I got my hands on this instrument, I was shocked at how um, how it handled the dynamics, how it handled soft playing, and how the bass really had presence. I, and the highest sparkle, the bass has presence. And there is an ability to play with a dynamic, you know, the dynamics that you would want to on a real piano. And that actually changed the way I approached playing Over the Rainbow. It actually changed the arrangement that I made. It was slower and it allowed the piano to breathe more. And so it's so refreshing to play an instrument that actually opens up how you even think and hear the music that you're playing. Pretty cool. So check it out. I'll have a link in the description to the instrument if you're interested in checking it out. Um, and I'll have, of course, links to the samples that I, that I put through here. I wish you, you really have to hear it straight out of the computer, too, even though I compressed the, the Somewhere Over the Rainbow, but it's still worth listening to. Anyway, that's it. I really hope this helped you, and I'll see you guys next time.